guys, welcome to Next Step with Cherry. So you guys have been asking me about where is this person that moved to New Zealand as a seasonal work and he is currently in New Zealand. So we are going to explore how everything went through, starting from when he started applying, where he applied, and currently in New Zealand, what is the opportunity that we can explore? Like what are the things that he knows? Because he has not been there for a while, so he might not have like like much information, but the little that he has, we are going to explore that. And hopefully in the future when we have more opportunity, I will as well bring him here so that he will give us the information that he has. So without wasting much time, I'm just going to allow him to introduce himself. But guys, before then, please, 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 please click the like button and share this video with your friends. Okay, so without wasting much time, we will just continue. Please, can you introduce yourself to us? Okay, my name is Michael, and uh, I'm in Nigeria. So that's the basic. <laughs> okay. yeah. Michael is a Nigerian, and uh, yeah, where are you currently? At least you need to tell us. I'm a Nigerian. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Okay, um, I'm a Nigerian. I'm living in New Zealand, mm -hmm. at the Bay of Plenty, Taranga. That's that has been my favorite place for a while now. And finally, I'm here now, so I'm saying I'm living at the Bay of Plains, you know, Taronga. Please, can you tell us about your journey? Why did you actually choose New Zealand? And uh, when you, how did you come in contact with the information? And like, how did everything happen? If you can just walk us step by step. Okay, at first, I wanted to apply to the UK as an IT consultant, but I discovered that there are a lot of Nigerians in the UK, and the UK is like very flooded with a lot of Nigerians. I looked at the US, the US is very strict, and Canada is something that I'll need to invest time and money in. So, so my friend advised me to check Australia. So while I was checking out Australia, then I noticed there was New Zealand close to Australia. So anytime I search for Australia, I usually get Australia or New Zealand. So I just made my search in New Zealand and then I saw the most available opportunity. So I had to make my findings towards that opening and I jumped into it. And luckily I, it went through and I got the job. Okay, so uh, like uh, if you can help us to understand like where did you actually find these jobs and uh, okay. uh, what kind of job did you target most of them? Yeah. Okay, okay. so as a, as a IT consultant, you know, IT jobs in New Zealand is straight to residency and it's very rare for them to even give you in the first place. So as a, you know, as a first step, I saw an opening where they have a job for hairless slaughters and uh, mid-processed workers and stuff. So I took the opportunity and then I grabbed it. I called the company to see if they are still accepting applicants. The company responded, they said they are still accepting. So I went on LinkedIn, saw their post on LinkedIn. That's where I saw their post first before I called them. So I went directly to their website instead, went to their career page and applied. Then there is a tricky part of it. The first time I applied, I didn't. I got a feedback that they will not continue with my application because I put in my application that I am not um, eligible to work in the country. So I went back and reapplied again, and put in the option now that I'm eligible to work and I have a visa to work there in the country. So that was how they shortlisted me for an interview. It was even during the interview that, okay, then there was a form that get, gave to me first to fill. So it was while I was filling the form that I had to put that I need assistance to relocate. So that was when they knew I didn't have the, the visa and I was able to pass on that stage. And then we had a face-to-face -face interview. So on the face-to-face -face interview, I, I really didn't have any experience in working out in this sector. So I had to tumble the internet, search the whole YouTube and everything. So I, I got every material I needed and everything. So the interview went successfully and that's that. Okay. 
But the key part is you should always prove that you have a um, you have um, you're eligible to work in the country. Okay, guys, what I picked from here is that there are three things that he did, and one of them was that he was the one that actually went to search for this job. And after that, he tried to call the company. So he called the company, you guys can see, he called the company and asked if the if the job was available. And when he applied first, they rejected him because it said that he is not eligible to for the work visa to uh, he's not eligible, you know, to work in the country. And then he had to reapply and he stated that he is eligible to work in the country. So you guys can see that question. Another thing that he also mentioned was that he did not really have like big experience in this area. So before his interview, uh, he went to the internet and did like uh, deep research as well uh, for this meat processor job, and then he passed his interview. Okay, so did you have to send your document? Like when they sent you the link, what are the documents you provided for the visa, and how did you? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So you bring your CV, you provided your CV, my CV, and then that's a visa application form. Just like we have checklists for UK UK visa application. After you fill in the visa application form online, you will have to get a PDF where you still need to submit it. And then the most important part is they ask you to bring your employment letter, all the job you've done in your life, if you can provide all of them. Now you be very careful, you be very careful. If you can select only two or three, just select two to be safe because they will verify all of them. They will even mm. call the they will even call the companies. They will check it on Google, check their HR to see if you really work with them. That's the immigration now. So not the company. The company does not really have anything to do with the immigration. I will check all these things. So after checking, if your visa, if you had a visa ban in any country, just forget about it. You're not getting it. And then um, if there's an overstay, they will ask you why is the overstay in any country you want to live for. Like me, I went to Dubai. So at first, I, my first job in Dubai was I worked as a sales rep. So while they were renewing the visa alongside other visa applicants, they mistakenly put in my visa as a cleaner in my company. So, you know, these immigration people spotted that out and they asked me to rectify why was my first visa a sales rep and my second visa a cleaner. So I had to write a message to my company there in Dubai. And then write a message to their... Uh, Immigration office in, in United Arab Emirates. So they sent me a letter of which I now delivered to the um, New Zealand immigration. That was the last. And after that, I got my visa. That is really great, guys. So you guys can hear it. And when it comes to you now working in New Zealand, now that you are in New Zealand, uh, how can they apply? Like from what you've seen from people like non EU people and also like people that are not New Zealanders, how can, how did they apply or how can people that are watching this video go about this job? Well, the first step to make is go to LinkedIn and then optimize your LinkedIn and then do your search. After doing your search, when you see the company, don't always rely on what you see on LinkedIn. Always go to their website and then search for it some um agents usually post job always call the agent or call the website or call the company and ask if the job is still available so that's that it gives you an edge once you do the application your, your name your phone number is already in the database so once and they use uh bots they use ai to to so just go online search for it especially linkedin and then you get it from there uh, what are the type of jobs that they should search when it comes to this seasonal work? Like okay. they have the titles that they should search, like you can advise them when it comes to seasonal jobs. Okay, first of all, it depends on their niche. Some persons might be, I think, client health, and um, I think that the, the health sector is also open. But the ones that are very available here is um, the kiwi fruit picker job, and the rest. I don't know if most of them can do it. I think they are not. Um, I will have to do it. They're not, they're not like these whites in the Europe that are very racist, no racism at all. So it's actually very cool. So, but the first thing, just call the company and discuss with the company. They are very reasonable. So if you discuss with them very well, just let me use the word, check them very well. They would, they are putting something for you. They're very reasonable. Mm. Guys, you've heard it. You need to stop being shy. You have to call the companies. So you call, if you see a job that matches your job description or a job that you think you can do, you have the CV, 
then if you they'll always put their phone number. If you go to the company website, you will always see their phone number. You call them and you talk to them. Tell them that you saw a job in their website and you know try to shake them like you said. Try to try to like talk with them, reason with them, and probably something might come up because a lot of people are putting an application, but you know you have you have to take more than that. He used LinkedIn, so LinkedIn was where he saw the job opening. He just search it change the location to New Zealand, search the title of the job and, and just go through them, find the company, go online, search for the company, check their career page, and then you can take it from there. So it, nothing, nothing good comes easy. You see that the process, it might sound so easy, but I mean, when you start doing it, you might meet with a lot of problem. So thank you so much for being here. And hopefully, in the future, when you have a, uh, inf more information for us, we can be able to as well talk about it. Thank you so okay. much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wish you good luck in New Zealand. Hopefully, we will see one day. <laughs> 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 sure, sure, sure. No